Hi! So today I'll be learning to play this game League of Legends. League is a MOBA, multiplayer online battle arena, where five people are pitted against other five people in a map, in a map, which is set on a map like this called Summoner's Rift, where five people are pitted against other five people. As you can see, the map is symmetrical, meaning that one team is on one side in their own base and the other team is on the other side, and they call usually blue side and red side. This is how your base looks like. The enemy has the same but just flipped. And from both sides there are three lanes that lead to each other's bases. There's top lane, mid lane and bot lane. And between those lanes there's a place called the jungle. Even though it looks more like a forest, but whatever. So one person goes top, one person goes mid, two people bot and one to the jungle. If you're not familiar with the game, this doesn't tell you anything. What, what's the goal of the game? What do you have to do there? Well, your main goal is actually to destroy this thing, which is in your base and the enemy's base, and it's called the Nexus. But what prevents you and your team just walking into your enemy's base and destroying the thing? Well, there's things called turrets, which look like this. Turrets are in-game structures that have their own health pool and protect the way to the Nexus. Because if you get too close to the Nexus, the, into their range, they start shooting you with laser beams that hurt a lot. Okay, in that case, how do we destroy the turrets? Well, you need the help of these little creatures called minions. Not these minions, these minions. Basically, they periodically spawn from the Nexus and go into each lane. And when they get to the turret, the turret starts to shoot them instead of you. So it gives you free reign to punch the turret. However, if there's an enemy under the turret and, they, and you hit that enemy, you deal damage, the turret will change its focus from the minions to you. So you gotta be careful about that. Another important element about minions is that they give gold. When you shoot, kick, explode, stab, or whatever, and the minion dies, you get gold. With gold, you can buy items like these, which basically give you power, stats that you need, like, I don't know, ability power, ability haste, which basically means cooldown, or lifesteal, so when you hit something, you get the life back, and so on and so forth. So, the more you have killed minions, the more money you have, the more items you have, the stronger you are, the quicker you can kill the enemy, the quicker you can get the turrets, and the quicker you can win the game by destroying the enemy's base, or the thing in the base called Nexus. That's the premise of the game. However, the game has a lot more nuance to them. But the nuance really depends on what and where you are. But let's start with lanes. So starting with top lane, where mostly beefy characters go like tanks who can soak all the damage but don't deal much, or juggernauts who are tanky and deal decent amount of damage but have short range and no hard CC, crowd control, like stuns or roots and anything in between. And the fact that Juggernauts don't have those these elements is often abused by ranged champions like this This evil incarnate those people who play this deserve the fate worse than <sighs> Okay, so range champions like this often abuse the, the range in order to get advantage in lane by poking out, uh, killing or denying CS to the enemy. Top lane is often called an island because it's so separate from the rest of the map and most of the time it's just you, the enemy and the minions. And that's how the top lane looks for the first half of the game because you basically try to pressure your enemy 
while also trying to get as much as minions as you can. Because a lot of actually top laners are item dependent. And so your purpose is often to get the money and the items and then you venture out into the rest of the map impacting uh, team fights or helping others. Well, there's also another playstyle. Actually staying in that lane or going into other lanes but still being alone and split pushing. Basically constantly pressuring that lane, any lane basically, uh, to by destroying towers and constantly farming and pushing and pushing those lanes into the turrets. Now, next up is mid lane, where mostly assassins, enchanters and mages play. And the fact that it's in the middle is very important, because that means you have an opportunity as a mid laner to roam around more, because everything is kind of close. If someone needs help, you can run there. If a top laner on the hand would try to run, it would take him considerably more time and that could put him in a disadvantage. But mid laner has a lot more opportunity in terms of uh, helping out and roaming. What mid laners often do is that they push the wave under the turret. That gives them time because there's no minions to kill and no money to gain. So they have an opportunity to help the team and it's very important because they are positioned in the middle. So everything is in one radius or like in close proximity basically and they have an opportunity to help their teammates or go get a kill and get even more advantage. While it might sound quite advantageous, it might not be the case because for example in top lane there's one side of the lane is a wall and the other side you can expect the enemy to be there but in mid lane there's so many angles to be ambushed from, which can put you into the disadvantage, which will be quite bad for not only you, but the whole team. Because mid lane is a special lane that goes from one base, straight line from one base to another. And means if you die and they get to get the turrets, uh, they have more opportunities to get your enemy's jungle. Uh, they have a... Um, so much more control or tempo of the map and they can pressure meaning that you will be your whole team will be put into the disadvantage which will lead to a loss so this lane is quite high risk high reward another place or role i want to talk about is the jungle and it basically is between uh, lanes and neutral monsters reside in the jungle if you, as a laner, can't kill your own minions, in the jungle anybody can kill those monsters. The enemy, you or your teammates, doesn't matter. Anybody can kill them. One of the purposes of the jungler is helping out laners by ganking, which basically puts uh, the enemy into a disadvantage because he either died or got his uh, health chunked off or anything else that the jungler can put his laner in an advantage. Jungler's other responsibility is getting objectives. Objectives are basically things in, on the map that give some kind of buffs or advantages uh, like for example the dragon. Dragons can give you more power, more attack speed or for example movement speed. So now on to the bot lane, where actually two people are in one lane. You might think, why is that the case? Because in every other situation there's been one person per one lane. Well, it has a very good reasoning, because the purpose of one of the laners in bot lane is ADC, attack damage carry. Their purpose is to deal as much damage as possible. They basically carry your team in terms of damage. But that has to be somehow compensated. So they're quite squishy. They can get killed easily. So they need help from supports. Supports can be different. Uh, they can heal you. They can shield you. They can kill the enemy faster. Uh, burst in burst damage. Uh, kill them very fast in, so they 
though they don't kill you and so on and so forth. So basically the purpose of support is to help you kill the enemies and prevent from you dying. Whew. Okay, I think that is enough explanatory and exposition about the game. So now there's two questions. Uh, how do I learn the game and why? The answer to the second question is quite easy actually, because I simply like the game. I love it and I believe in it, despite the infamously toxic community that League of Legends is known for. Well, with time I've become immune to it. I don't care anymore. You sometimes get bad teammates, so what? Move on kind of thing, you know? So this lets me get serious about the game. And I want to. I want to climb the rank ladder. If you don't know what rank is, it's basically like, you know, in military, there's private uh, lieutenant, sergeant, and so on and so forth. There's something similar here. Uh, this here you don't get much authority. You just can say I'm better than you, because you have higher rank. Well, there's iron, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and so on and so forth. And the higher you are, the better you are at the game. And I want to get good at it. And my goal is to get to diamond. If everything goes very smoothly and very well, I will climb as far as I can. But the goal here right now is diamond. Coming back to the first question of how do you learn the game? Well, I think I have to go back to the fundamentals of the game and relearn them. But to do that, I need to do research. So I guess let's get started. After going through some videos and articles, there was a reoccurring thing of if you want to climb, you should choose a main role and a main champion. Because if you switch per from one role to another, and every role has their own unique fundamentals, you don't really learn one role fully. You can't commit to one doing one and the same thing in every game. And same with champions, basically like, if you play many different champions, then you have to constantly relearn what you have to do in that role. So basically choosing one role and one champion and that you will learn fully, you can then focus on decision making on how to win the game using this role and this champion, which makes sense. So I started thinking, what roles do I like? And I like all of them. But because I want to climb and I don't want to depend on another person, so I decided that bottom lane is not gonna be in my choice. So that leaves us top lane, mid lane, and uh, jungle. And to choose one of them, I am not sure which one I would like. Because I like all of them. So I decided to try choosing it by champions. Champion pools that are in uh, in those roles. So I've chosen some of the champions that interest me and I'm gonna play three games with every champion and see which one I had most fun with and most success. So I have a lot of games to play. Let us begin then.
finally chosen myself a main after many, many, many games played. Already in the beginning, I decided I don't want to play bot lane because I didn't want to duo with anyone. Like, I didn't want to dis depend on another person. Like, support depends on the ADC, and the ADC depends on the support. Then I played in the jungle, which I didn't do much. I only played two champions there. Because at some point I gave up. Because while I was doing dragon, my bot lane was taking plates while I pinged them to help to do the dragon. And the enemy uh, team then came and killed me and got the dragon. My fault, I guess, even though, I don't know. The feeling of like you, ha you have responsibilities to the jungle and you can't fulfill them without your teammates. But if your teammates just do not wish to cooperate, well, the enemy is so coordinated, you just, you're just stuck. That's it. Like, I am in my jungle, I, I am getting invaded, my, my teammates just don't look at the map and don't help me even though I ping them. It just sucks in so many ways. Well, also then, my teammates blame me for not getting the dragon, even though they could have helped, or they should have helped. And my mid laner and top laner blame me that I don't gank enough uh, to help them, even though they never set up ganks, they always push and die to the pushing, and it's always a jungle diff. So all those elements were so frustrating that I decided, no. Jungle, I don't want to do jungle this time. So that leaves us with mid lane and top lane. Top lane was actually my next one and I played a lot of it because I had a lot of champions that I enjoyed or seemed like interesting to me like Jax, Davius, Gavin, Fiora, Aurelia, Renekton, uh, Yorick, all those champions that I actually most of them I enjoyed playing. Nevertheless, I had a top three, which was Renekton, Aurelia, and Yorick. Speaking of Yorick, I think, despite me, I'm, I'm not gonna main him. I just, somehow I enjoyed him a lot. I clicked with him, not like a main, but in a different way. Like, he's gonna be my pocket pick. When I'm frustrated, or I'm tired, or, and I still wanna play, or I wanna take a break from my main, I will be playing Yorick because I don't know something about his playstyle that makes it feel such a so different in a way that it's so refreshing, like kind of playing the game a bit solo, you know, split pushing and doing your own thing while also being kind of a monster at some point. You you deal so much damage and you are able to end games on your own just. Going, if there's an opportunity, you can go to the enemy Nexus, kill the towers, and potentially destroy the Nexus. So, Yorick has been really fun for me. So, we have the other two Renekton. Renekton was a really fun champion as well. I went almost every lane with him. Every single lane, he feels like a cheat code to win lane. But with him, it was more of like a win lane, lose game kind of thing. Like when I came out of the lane, I always wasn't positive. Like I was four and zero or something along the lines. But every time I won team fights, that kind of just went down. I don't know if it was because of me or, or it's just that Renekton is a champion like that. That just don't feel like I had enough agency to split push or to win team fights or have any impact later in the game. So I decided that despite me really enjoying him, uh, but the, the enjoyment was ma mainly in lane. So I decided, okay, fine, I'll move on. And next one, which was very close contender to becoming a main, is Aurelia. Aurelia was very difficult to pick up because she has so much conditions to do a lot. Like she has the stacks, she has to uh, hit uh, her uh, skill shots to do anything and so on and so forth. 
So that was fun, but it was very difficult because I don't know, something about her is that every time I lost, like I lost most games with her, but every time I lost, I didn't feel discouraged because I always knew what I had to do better the next game. It's like, I wasn't, it never got out stat checked or, or I wasn't a really bad matchup. Even then, when I, if I was in a, bit, a really bad matchup, I still felt like I had potential or opportunity to win it. It's just that my mastery of the champion was lacking. I couldn't perform on her good enough to make it happen. And that kind of feeling of infinite growth or infinite potential with the champion just felt good to me. Like, like I felt like I didn't lose not because of my mistakes. Like, I over, every time I lost it was because I didn't do good enough. And that just makes me feel I want to try her again and again and again until I master her and become a god in her. And she was really close to becoming my main. And so, because all the contenders from top lane are off the list, we're moving on to mid lane. In mid lane, I played three champions. Action and then Yone and Yasuo. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I'm sorry. Don't boo me, but I picked Yasuo. Yes, I'm one of those, I'm sorry. But something about him which is very similar to Irelia. I felt the same way with him as with Irelia, even though he was easy to pick up, but as hard maybe even harder, nah, no, as hard to master as Irelia. So, that kind of, again, infinite potential, just lack of skill was the problem, is the problem, and I don't know, something about it just makes me really draw to a champion. It's like, it's, I'm losing not because things around me, but, but because I'm doing something wrong, it, and that kind of feeling gives more control, I guess. I feel like I can do something better. And with Yasuo, it's... I don't know why I picked him over Irelia, I'm not sure. But I think it's because it's in mid lane. Mid lane, again, has more agency over the map. And mid lane is a role that I'm more used to because I used to main mid lane. And so... So basically, yes, so just clicked a bit better with me than Aurelia did, and I decided I'm starting to main Yasuo. Now that I found the main, it's time to get really familiar with his kit and see what Yasuo is all about. So let's get into a practice tool and, and let's see. After scouring the internet on how to play Yasuo, I think I have finally found all the fundamentals that I need to know to start to play Yasuo. Starting with his kit, and his first ability is his passive, which is called Way of the Wanderer. His first half of his passive is that he gets basically a shield, and when the shield is procced, it goes away. And to get it back, Yasuo has to walk around, and the more he moves around, the faster the shield regenerates back. Yes, so second part of his passive is that his critical strike chance is increased, but his critical strike deals less damage. And for every critical strike chance that is above 100%, he gets bonus attack damage. On to Yasuo's next ability, Q, Steel Tempest. Basically, it's a thrust with his sword that deals extra damage. An important fact about this ability is that it stacks, and on the third stack, he gets a long range tornado. So it looks something like this you do once, you wait for your cooldown, you kill twice, and you get a tornado. As you can see, this is the range of the tornado. So the tornado you basically deal the damage the same as you would do with your Q and knock up the enemy. And so, his third ability is the wind wall. Basically, he throws it out, and anything that comes from that side 
cannot basically pass through the wind wall. It blocks and destroys all projectiles. Then we have Yasuo's E, which is a basically a dash that goes through a target. It looks something Virtue like this. Is no more than a lie. And on each target there's a 10 second cooldown. So you can't dash uh, unlimitedly on them, but you, if you have potentially enough minions, monsters and enemies, you can dash many, many, many times. Another fact about this ability is that each use of this ability grants 25% bonus damage to the next use for 5 seconds, stacking up to 50%. So basically, it deals a bit more damage after each time you basically use it. But it deals magic damage, but and you mostly build AD, so I don't think it matters much unless you want to go AP. Yeah, so which I just don't recommend, but you do you. Yeah, so his last ability is his ultimate. And this ultimate synergizes with his third Q, which we remember was a tornado. So after Some one, mistake. two, three times, and the third time, the enemy goes airborne, right? And during that airborne, I can use this ability. Otherwise, this ability doesn't do anything. See? Must be airborne. If I use it and I teleport to the target and deal damage to them. When using this ability, you basically get the full stack of your first half of the passive, which was the shield, and but you lose your stacks from your Q. And another important thing is that after ult ulting an enemy with the R. Yasuo's critical strikes ignore 50% bonus armor for 15 seconds. So after uh, armor stacking champions or tanks, it's very, I guess, useful to first ulti them and then start shredding them as much as you can. Now that we have summarized his kit, we need to understand how to utilize his kit in order to pilot him in mid lane. His Q has a decent range, so it can be also used the easy through part. the minions. For example, if an enemy is here, I can kill the minion and uh, damage the enemy. Just See? For so, oftentimes, when someone wants to come and uh, I guess farm minions, you have the opportunity to actually. Poke them, give damage. Or when as you can see I have the third Q and this gives a lot of pressure because that gives some sort of until the uh, CC to them. Airborne. They don't want to get close because if they get airborne, I can dash close to them and start damaging them. Next up is using wind wall in laning phase. No one is so, promised tomorrow. Every enemy has their own set of abilities, so some abilities that they use can damage more or be, I guess, worse for you. So to avoid getting hit with those abilities, you oftentimes can use your wind a big stun from a, uh, the swords I guess, Victor's laser or whatever else. You can use this as a way to dodge that. But this skill has a very long cooldown, so you have to use it very quickly. After that, you have to be patient and use it uh, in the most opportune moments. Like we talked about, Yasuo has a dash. Never so could stay using a dash to get closer or away from it is very important. Forget Another important I, uh... thing about the dash is actually you can combine it with the Q. If you just dash, it looks like this. If you just Q, it looks like this. But what you can do is basically do a spin. But you actually can, when you have third Q, you can like put the enemy to airborne, knock them up by EQing. You have to do that at the same time. The road to ruin is shorter than you think. So 
this is some how it looks. And oftentimes what people do. Is that they like this? What did I just do? So basically, I stacked up my cube like this. I like spin on this guy, but as I was spinning, I flashed to this guy. It's just death. Nothing in order serious. To him. So this can be also done on minions. This combo is very unexpected for your enemy, so it gives you an advantage. There's another thing that Yasuo mains do in terms of combos that uh, gives them extra damage, and it's when you stack up your you, you knock someone. I knew basically, basically what I did is that I stacked up. I, I waited until this is up and at the same time did this and altered this person then. So basically it's a combo that puts that damage, this damage onto this person, giving you basically an extra uh, free Q on the enemy. This can only be done when your Q is on 1.3 second cooldown because otherwise uh, your Q doesn't come up fast enough for you to do that. Now that we understand Yasuo's kit, we can now focus on his itemization. As a starting item, there's two options and they are on my screen, Doran's Blade or Doran's Shield. Doran's Blade is when your matchup, uh, you feel like you're even or you will be winning. Turn shield is when you feel like it's a hard matchup for you and you won't be able to win it that easily and you need some sustain in lane. In most games you have to rush this item, Berserker Greaves. It's because your Q cooldown I guess scales with attack speed. The more attack speed you have, the less cooldown your Q has. Next up I guess you have three options. The most popular one is the Immortal Shield. This basically gives you more sustain and it doesn't make you so squishy because assassin builds like an ADC which as you remember I talked about that they are quite squishy because they deal a lot of damage and they deal a lot of damage because they get these items that are based on damage and same goes for Yasuo as he has a specific kind of way of building because of his passive like I mentioned before he has increased uh, critical strike chance but uh, decreased uh, critical strike damage so this means he builds like an ADC which makes him quite squishy an immortal shield bow gives him lifesteal which basically gives him enough sustain and the immortal shield bow's passive gives him uh, some survivability because of the shield People build Kraken Saint to get more damage. That means you trade off your survivability from the shield of the Immortal Shield Bow and the Lifesteal for the damage and attack speed. Then there's a third path that came from this season after the durability patch. And this is the Blade of the Rune King, which is a very good item overall as it basically uh, applies an additional 12% enemy current health physical damage on hit, which is a lot of damage. And attacking a champion three times deals magic damage and steals the movement speed, which is like it's an overall very amazing item. But oftentimes, after this item, people build some fair ages or they miss mix and match basically. But a lot of times, it's built with a tank item and to, I guess. Like this item is strong enough that Yasuo can build this item, but it's a very, I guess, off-meta kind of thing. Even though it's quite popular, I I do not enjoy this playstyle. But if you do, go for it. Your second 
Your second item, not including boots, is gonna be this item, Infinity Age. Basically because you get extra critical, ch uh, critical uh, strike chance, you don't need items to get to 100%. You can build already Infinity Age as your second item, which is a fully based damage based item. It gives you so much damage. 70 attack damage, 20% critical hit, uh, strike chance, and if you have at least 60% critical strike chance, gain 35% critical strike damage, which is quite insane amount of damage. After Infinity Edge, it's up to you. What do you feel like fits your game best? If they have a lot of AD and you feel like you could uh, use some survivability, Death Sense is a very good option. If the enemy has a lot of champions that heal a lot, like Silas, Kane, Atrox, you can build Mortal Reminder. If you feel you want more damage but still uh, have some sort of sustain, Bloodthirster is a very good option. If the enemy has a lot of magic Your damage, you can buy Ritzen, which gives you magic resist and on hit damage and attack speed, which is all good stats for Yasuo. If the enemy has a lot of tanks, all the times it's very important to build low dominance regard, which gives, it gives more armor penetration and, and its uh, passive basically gives you 15% uh, bonus physical damage against champions with greater max health than you, which basically is very good uh, item against tanks, bruises and anyone basically who is who has a lot of armor or health. Yasuo mid has multiple rune pages but I'll go through the most basic and most popular ones. So Lethal Tempo is good at 1v1ing and stacking up that attack speed that Yasuo likes that so much. Conqueror on the other hand gives you a lot of heals and damage that scales well into the late game. Here you mostly go Triumph because you don't really benefit from the others that much. Most of the time here we go Alacrity, but if you know that the enemy has a lot of CC, you can go this. Or when you go in Kraken Slayer and you still feel like you want some uh, lifesteal because you already have uh, attack speed from the item, you can go Bloodline so you would get more lifesteal. Here it, it is mostly recommended to go last stand because it synergizes well with the Immortal Shield Bow because when you get low enough to, for the shield to proc, you are able to deal more damage and kill the enemy before the, the shield breaks or disappears and you will just burst it down. This is good only when you're unexpectedly going against a tanky champion in mid lane, which doesn't happen very often, but if it does, for example you're going against Orn or Cyan or Cho'Gath in mid lane, you can go this. This synergizes well with Kraken Slayer because in that case you you're going all out on damage and this is a very good way to actually execute people with your ultimate, that you save up your ultimate towards the end and then you execute them with, uh, with the help of Coupe de Gras. On the secondary tree you have only two options, it's domination or resolve. In Resolve, you either take Second Wind or Bone Plating. Second Wind uh, against uh, poking champions and uh, Bone Plating against champions that want to combo you. Here you have also two options, Unflinching, which basically gives you tenacity against CC. Then we have Revitalize, where you can get more heals and shield power. And as we know, uh, Yasuo has inbuilt shield and we most of the time build, build uh, Immortal Shield Bow that also has a shield. So Yanos yeah, so overall really really well uh, benefits from this. And our second option is Domination Tree, which most of the time goes with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, to get more damage and here you can get more, uh, more healing, or Taste of Blood and Treasure Hunter. Uh, with Treasure Hunter you basically get more gold. Nevertheless, I would still recommend you going this tree because Yasuo's kit just benefits from it so much from the heals and shield power and Yasuo has a lot of difficult matchups in mid lane. So getting that kind of ways to sustain yourself and prevent from being poked out or killed is very beneficial. Here you obviously uh, go 
attack speed because I also really benefits from attack speed and that the force and here you have two options if you're going against the D champions you go armor if you're going against AP champions you're going magic resist okay now that I've explained and gone through the fundamentals of Yasuo it's time to go through the fundamentals of mid lane this is where wave management comes into play like I explained before minions come out of nexus periodically in waves and so utilizing the kind of timings and minion interactions on each other to get an advantage is very important the first wave management tactic i want to explore is fast pushing which is quite self-explanatory you push the wave fast you kill the enemy's uh, minions as fast as as fast as you can by using most of your abilities and by doing so your wave goes under the enemy's turret and the turret kills the enemy's minions which puts your the enemy I guess into this advantage because he doesn't get the gold because the turret kills the minions. By crashing the wave under the enemy's turret you have a bit of time to do something because there's no minions that you can kill and you don't want to go on the enemy's turret to because that makes you very vulnerable. So you have a bit of time either to help your jungler or maybe set up some vision. The next one is slow pushing and it's again very self-explanatory. Basically you push the wave as slow as you can. You kill the enemy's minions by last hitting them as much as you can. So basically you let the enemy's minions get as low health as you can and then you kill them to get the money from it. And while your minions still are building up on the uh, on your side because you're killing the minions a bit faster than your minions are getting killed because of the last hit that means basically your minions stack up becomes a bigger wave and so, and slowly you get closer and closer to the enemy turret when you where you crash the big wave you have the time and opportunity to go roam around or set up some ganks or help your jungler whatever else that could be very beneficial to your team because the enemy has to then think should he help his team from you by following you but he then loses the wave and the money and the experience from there or should he get those resources the experience and money but sacrifice his teammates uh, in the process so slow pushing is a very beneficial uh, tactic in wave management the last one I want to talk about is freezing, which basically means putting kind of enemies and your wave into a stagnant position where it doesn't move to his side or your side. So why is it beneficial? Well, it's because if you do that near your turret, that means that the enemy doesn't have much options to trade with you because he would have to go under the turret and you can really farm by last hitting uh, the minions, trimming the wave in order for it to stay that way. And you do that by having extra minions on the enemy wave and by trimming whenever you need to do so. And basically you can make the wave stay in the same place where the enemy has to come closer to your turn, be more vulnerable to ganks, be more vulnerable to trading and he himself loses on a lot of farm. So it's a very, very strong tactic and very beneficial in order to get advantage in lane. I've mentioned trading here and there, but I want to explain what it is exactly. Well, it is basically trading health or trading damage. You damage the enemy and the enemy tries to damage you. And your goal is to damage the enemy more than the enemy does you. So basically, so you can be in health advantage. When you have health advantage, you are in control of the lane. You can freeze, you can push, you can slow push, and the enemy will be too afraid to come too close to you because otherwise you're more likely to win uh, the 1v1 because you have more health. Another mid lane fundamental I want to talk about is roaming and ganking. Remember I mentioned uh, pushing uh, the waves, slow pushing, fast pushing? Well, when you crash the wave on the enemy turret, you have nothing to do because there's no minions to farm. 
well, you have time to roam by setting up vision rewards, helping your jung jungler with objectives on Scholar Crab, or helping your jungler when he is being attacked. When you can gank is when you go to the uh, top or bot lane and help your team to get the kill or assist. And this can often go very wrong because you can die. For example, if the enemy, I guess, bot lane is very good, they can maybe get three kills and that puts your bot lane in the disadvantage and you too because you're not in lane and you were on a death timer and you have to walk from your base to the lane, uh, which takes time. So it can put you at a disadvantage because the enemy can do basically the same now. They can push the wave, you will lose uh, the farm to the turret and they can go help their team. So basically that puts you in, in a big disadvantage, which means it's a very high risk, high reward kind of thing. If you risk going, uh, going and ganking, you can get a kill or assists, you get more money, you can go back to lane, get the farm, back, you have more items than your enemy. But if you die, like I explained, it could be very bad for you and your other lanes as well. The last thing I want to talk about fundamentals is vision. And vision is like the second most important thing in the game. If CS is the king, then vision is the secondary. Because that means you have information. Vision gives you information. And the whole game is all about decision making. And the more information you, you have, the more calculated uh, decisions you can make. And potentially those decisions can lead you to a win. And yeah, this is pretty much it for all the fundamentals of mid lane. Vision, wave management, uh, ganking and roaming, and trading. Four things that I that I found through my research to be the most uh, important influential elements of mid lane. Oh, okay. I think I think this is it. I've explained everything. I explained the game. I explained the uh, champion. I explained mid lane. Everything. I have to utilize the information that I've gathered in my games and and get to diamond. So I guess let the, let the grind begin. See you in the next video.